first arrow uh, up at up high and the second one I'll have to settle with uh, with an eight got the balloon though thanks for watching the type of bow Jimmy is using is called recurve bow the pig that he is aiming at is 120 yards away the shot is shown in slow motion if six arrows are held with a bow in the left hand, the archer can fire one arrow a second with this type of bow. The Huns use the bow in a 180 degree arc and reach 300 to 400 yards, able to kill horses and even pierce armor. The white man can never win another war on the ground. His days of war, victory, his, great, his days of background victory, uh oh. Can I prove it? Yes. Take all the action that's going on on this earth right now that he's involved in. Tell me where he's winning. Nowhere. Why, some rice farmers, some rice farmers, some rice eaters ran him out of Korea. Yes, they ran him out of Korea. Rice eaters with nothing but gym shoes and a rifle and a bowl of rice. Took him and his tanks and his napalm and all that other action he's supposed to have and ran him across the Yalu. Why? Because the day that he can win on the ground is past. Up in uh, French Indochina, those little peasants, race growers, took on the might of the French army and ran all the Frenchmen. You remember Din Ben Phu? The same thing happened in Algeria, in Africa. They didn't have anything but a rifle. The French had all these highly mechanized instruments of warfare. But they put some guerrilla action on them. And a, and a, and a white man can't fight a guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla action takes heart, takes nerve, and he doesn't have that. He's brave when he's got tanks. He's brave when he's got planes. He's brave when he's got bombs. He's brave when he's got a whole lot of company along with him. But you take that little man from Africa and Asia, turn him loose in the woods with a blade. With a blade. That's all he needs. All he needs is a blade. And when the sun comes down, goes down, and it dark, it's even Stephen. It's the ballot or the bullet. Shots so we can pop this balloon at 200 and continue our game here. See everything? That's 200 yards. Took me uh, three shots. I'll admit it was a full three. I wanted to say two, but it was three. <sighs> Anyways, we we'll grab those arrows, move around back. We're back here at 300 yards now. Uh, you can see my flag down there at 100, my flag at 200. Here's my flag at 300. Uh, the jump from 100 to 200 doesn't seem like that much, but when you come back from 200 yards to 300 yards, it uh, it's a huge difference. So I really had to tweak my setup to get to where I can even try this shot. Um, I got a big balloon that down there. Uh, hopefully we can get on target within a couple shots. I'm pretty sure we can. I've been playing around with it, so uh, we're going to get after it here. Ooh. 
six inches right. Spot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was 300 yards. Zachariah. Right on, brother. This kind of bow is called a compound bow. It can kill a horse, a pig, or a police dog at 500 yards. Look at the archer's right hand. He is not touching the arrow. There are no fingerprints on an arrow. And unlike a gun, which leaves distinctive markings on a bullet, which can be traced to an individual gun, bows do not leave any distinguishing marks on an arrow, and it is impossible to trace a specific arrow to a specific bow. He believed in, he believed in respecting people. He believed in doing unto others as he would have done unto himself. But at the same time, if anybody attacks him, he believed in retaliating if it cost him his life. And it is good for white people to know this, because if white people get the impression that Negroes all endorse this old turn the other cheap, cowardly philosophy of Dr. Martin Luther King, then whites are going to make the mistake of putting their hands on some black man thinking that he's going to turn the other cheek and he'll end up losing his hand and losing his life in the, in the trial. This is a Cobra 80-pound pistol grip crossbow. It shoots metal bolts. This is a badass 175 pound hunting crossbow. It can shoot broadhead arrows which cause massive blood loss or vodka tick arrows which can penetrate body armor. There technically are modern day bodkins. You're probably saying, what? Look, I don't know about these. Well, these are some cheap Walmart brand uh, expanding broadheads. And I will tell you, they suck really bad. Okay? Now, what happens when you start shooting these is these little cheap blades on here, they break off. So, what does that leave you with? It leaves you with the modern day bodkin tip. Now, I just shot this out of the compound. You saw me fire this. I have the compound bow just a second ago. Now let me show you the damage and the penetration that this had on the Kevlar. Look at that. Right through a nice solid hunk right there in the corner. It did not graze it or anything. That is through every single layer right there. Look at that penetration. In terms of the Looking violence at a good that took place, it seems to have accomplished something, and that's not to advocate for it. So people who are hearing this and right. saying, oh, this guy's advocating for violence, not advocating for it, just as a journalist looking at it and saying, was it successful, and did it have an end result that they would not have achieved in Baltimore otherwise? And it may have. Like I've explained, it's, when you bring in the First Amendment, it's up the government to respond to the nonviolent protesting of the First Amendment. If, you, if government doesn't respond to the nonviolence, well, then maybe it requires violence. And certainly I don't advocate for it, but who's at fault here? The government is then for not responding to the regular protest and for allowing it to become violent because they did not respond to it. Ray, his leg look broke. Look at his leg. Look at his leg. That boy leg look broke. His leg broken. Y'all dragging him like Before I hit the corner, I heard the taser. So, but I couldn't record it because I was still in the backside. But um, once I got around to see where Freddie was, I instantly started court, uh, recording, and I pulled my camera out. I couldn't get a good view from the back, so I went around the band to try to get a better angle. I just saw the way they had him folded up. They had him folded up like he was a, a crab or, or, or like a piece of origami, you know what I mean? Like, he was all bent up, and they had his knee, they had, the officer had their knee and his neck, and he was just screaming. He was, I mean, like, screaming for life, you know what I mean?
Right. He couldn't breathe. He needed an asthma pump, which he let them know. I couldn't breathe. I need an asthma pump. They ignored it. You know what I mean? When they went to pick him up off the ground, his legs were left. I've been recording this shit. I've been recording. It's just, it's just, they really did a number on him. And then on top of all of it, they're denying it. They're denying the fact that, that Freddie was okay before they, before the police got to him. You know what I mean?